Alright, greetings family, Bomani Tamba here and we are live here in Prom Prom not too far from Tema and we're here to do a house tour with our sister Erna Casa <laughs> Treat. Come here. Come, go get you a treat. Come on. Come on. Yummy. Come and get you a treat. Come on. It's okay. Come on. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm gonna get them a treat so they can go away. It's okay. Just come on. Hey, yummy. Come and get you a treat. Come on. Come. Yummy. Come and get you a treat. I think come they're, on. they're more afraid come of y'all than, than, <laughs> than you are of them. Yes. We don't want nobody to really take much of a chance. <laughs> Should we take our shoe off? Or first and clean. Should we take it off? Walk, walk in as. Okay. Wait. 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 Sit. 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 Come on. You want a treat? Come here. Come on. Wait. I know you haven't seen this many people in a long time. But it's okay. Come on. Let's start with the treat. Step back, please. Now they're afraid. Of, just move back, and they'll yeah. come. Come on, baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. You don't have to come back. Come get your drink. JJ. JJ. Excellent, greetings, greetings. Thank you, thank you. Welcome again. Thank you. Absolutely, appreciate you inviting us. So, family, it's one of our good repatriates. She's going to introduce herself to you. Okay, I'm Erna Terefe Casa. And for those of you who don't know, Bomani has made me very popular. I have people that call me from everywhere who have seen those videos, who are calling me, asking me questions all the time. So, Bomani, thank you very much. Absolutely, we we'll appreciate you opening your house so we can see how one of our own from the diaspora, where this return is living. Because uh, you know, sometimes people just want to see how you're living. I can see that you're very secure in here. Yes, uh, to be honest with you, when I first built the house, I had no security gates up. I came from Detroit. So, and I, have, I didn't have security gates up in Detroit, so I put up no security gates. And one of the young men that was um, uh, young man that was working for me, I left him here. That was before I officially moved here. And I left him here. He was the watchman. And then someone called me and told me that they saw him walking down the road with this big yellow bag. I had these huge yellow garbage bags. And he broke into the house and stole about $3,500 worth of living. So I came back during the summer. And when I came back during the summer, the first thing I did was went through and put up security gates on it. But it was not my intentions to put it up, but everybody was telling me I needed to do it. But I figured, you know, I'm in Africa. Yeah. They'll break into your house in Africa, too. Yeah. Somebody will. <laughs> so not all the time. So actually, no one from the outside broke in. He that was working for me did it. Well, so inside job. Inside job. That's it, exactly. Inside job. That's it. That's it, exactly. So anyway, you all are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So perfect. I'll lead us and we'll follow you. So this is um, this. Yes. Can you tell us about the building process? Yes. How did that work out? Uh, well, what happened was um, I got this land. What happened was I got the land uh, in 2000, so I've had it for 20 years, and then um, uh, it took me a year and a half to build it. And if you're going to build something here, you really do need to be here. Uh, because uh, unfortunate, if you don't have the correct people that's working with you, then you'll find out that a lot of uh, your materials will be missing. And when I bought the land out here, actually nothing was out here. Bush was literally up to here 20 years ago. 
and um, I got the land and I bought the mat bought materials that I needed and I left it here. We had a little wooden structure out there that was made with um, plywood and that's where I kept all of the materials at. And um, I found out later one of the workers that was working here actually called me and told me that they were still in my stuff. And like I said, we had bush, literally that was up to here, and they would take it and put it out in the bush and then take it away. So um, I changed that one, the person who was building, because what happened was he was supposed to have been here taking care of things, but he wasn't here at all. And so the people were just, the people that was working with him would take the things and he didn't even know they were taking the things. So that was part of it, but it took me like a year and a half to build it. It's okay. It took me a year and a half to build it. And, um, and then after that, um, I officially retired and moved here 10 years ago. And so it was, it's been built 18 years ago. And um, I'll take you out later and show you around. And the entire complex, like I said, the land cost me $8,000 20 years ago for an entire acre. And now it's about one plot. An entire acre consists of four plots. And it's 200 by 400. And at the time, they were selling 100 by 100 per plot. And um, so I paid $8,000 for the acre of land. But two years before, it was only $200. Oh, wow. Oh, I think once they heard my accent, the price went up a little bit. <laughs> and that's likely to happen once they hear your accent. The prices can go up some. So, uh, but now I was told that it's selling for between uh, fifteen and thirty-five thousand dollars for one plot. So that's one plot. That's four plots. That's one plot, not four. One. Uh, that which is by the ocean. Okay. Uh, but right now it's really kind of hard to find land by the ocean because a lot of us have moved out here in addition to a lot of uh, Ghanaian diasporas who had been on the outside who came back in and then they start building. The place has really grown by leaps, leaps and bounds in the last 20 years. Because literally nothing was out here but a few little, little, little bitty houses here and there and just trees, neem trees and bush everywhere. So. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, this is just an example of what you can do if you plan in advance. Unless you got a lot of money and you can just go to the bank and get it out and come and, you know, build your house. I did. I worked two jobs for 10 years, sometimes three. I used to take groups over to Africa. Uh, my first time in Africa, actually next year, will be 40 years ago. And so um, I worked two full-time jobs to save up money. And even after that, I didn't have enough money to build the house. So I, I went back in and refinanced the house that I was in to get the rest of the money to uh, finish building it. And actually, I built it this big because I planned on having a bed and breakfast. But if any of you plan on doing that, don't make the same mistake I made. And that mistake was I built something that was not really conducive. You know, in America, they have these bed and breakfasts where people just come in and stay in the same house you're living in. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think, I didn't build this house so it would uh, be uh, conducive to it being uh, an Airbnb. So what happens is, if anybody's coming here, I have to be here all the time. I can't leave my keys with a total stranger. Mm -hmm. And so if someone is coming here to stay, then I would have to be here at all times. And then the other part of it was, uh, really difficult finding some really good help. Somebody that was willing to come here and stay here and work here. That was all the difficult part. So I just decided, forget about the Airbnb. Uh, but when we go outside, I'll show you one of the houses that I did build out there that I thought, if I had known better, I could have built me a two or three bedroom little house. And then I could have built about four or five little round houses. And uh, it would have been fine. Uh, JJ, come down and close the gate, please. There are some little kids over here, and sometimes they pass by. And, uh, JJ, JJ, please come on. Those kids, come on. Close the gate, please. Come back, come back. So, um, so I, 
Wow. <laughs> yeah, the patrol dog. So that's the, so family, what we're looking at is that is the ocean. That's how close Erna is by the ocean. No, no, you can't come in. I have guests in here, so you can't come in now. Later, okay? Okay. Later, okay? It's okay. They're good people. They're not going to do anything to me. You got a patrol dog in the watch. Yeah, they really are good. They're good watch dogs. They really are. Everybody talk about them because the traditional ones that you see around here that look like them, they're just little dogs. You know, really small, and they ask me, are these local dogs? I'm like, yeah, they are. How did they get so big? I buy dog food and feed them dog food. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's how they get that big. They eat two times a day, a big that's pan full of dog food, and, and they grow. So if you feed them well, they will grow well. <laughs> is that, I'm scared, is that a particular breed, or is that some sort of mix? They're local dogs. That's I've seen them all over the place. Yeah, they all they're mutts. Like they're yeah. mutts. They really are mutts. The, the only difference in the mutts you'll see outside in these is that, like I said, because I feed them dog food, mm -hmm. I buy pedigree and all the other type dog food, and that's what I feed them in. So they they're grow. Happy. They grow too, mm -hmm. and they're very protective. What's too. the difference between your dog and, and the one with the ears just stick out like that? I have Those are the dogs I'm seeing. I have uh, no <laughs> idea. I have no idea. I'm just saying, and, no, and, and, and by the way, too, I have uh, five little Maltese upstairs up on the patio. So I know you're hot. Would you like to go upstairs for a minute? Yes. And kind of okay. And take you upstairs because the house is usually kind of closed down when I'm not here. So I built the house. The house has seven bedrooms and uh, Five and a half bathrooms is in my house. And uh, library, oh, well, an office, not a library. And actually, what happened was I took my, my bedroom was the, uh, I'm just sweating and you getting all of this too. <laughs> <laughs> All in nature, that's all in nature. Uh, my bedroom, which is right, this is a, my office here, and the bedroom is next door. Usually I show people my bedroom, but this morning I just got up out the bed and left it. So. Oh, I got you. So, yeah, I got you. It's fabulous, and we know it has yellow. How do you know? Because you are like a June. So anyway, I'll show you a little bit. Uh, and I say this. Uh, you have to promise, and Bermani is putting it on camera, on video, and a lot of a lot of people have seen these videos, but you have to promise that you won't go back and tell anybody how junky it was. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, won't show, we won't show that part. <laughs> Don't show that part. There you go. Okay, so you can come and see. Uh, but you can't see the office, so. Yeah, it really is not So here is uh, one of the bedrooms over here. You can walk right in. It's so perfect. Yeah, we, we, this will this will actually work. The year of the goddess for Uh huh. Yellow. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. And over here is the guest bathroom here. Nice, spacious, beautiful. Oh my God. Yeah, this is. Yeah. Even before I started going to Africa, I was thinking about the Africa. Yeah. 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 It's beautiful and spacious. No, this is the like the guest. Oh, wow. <laughs> 